What's up everyone? Welcome back to the poker vlog. It is Sunday, July 23rd. It is about 12:30 in the afternoon. Just finishing up editing the vlog that will be out tomorrow on Monday, July 24th, which you probably have already seen. And I'm going to grab some lunch and then we're going to go head over to the poker room at South Point. So I think we're going to go back to our old hang and either jump into the one, two streets or the two, three streets, depending on how the games are looking. So that's the plan for today. We're going to get some food. We're going to go play some poker and... I'm going to bring all of you fine folks along with me to join in on the action and see what playing these low stakes games in Las Vegas is like. So I will see you all at the table at South Point in just a few moments. It's always a wonderful thing when about the third hand dealt in, you look down at a big premium pocket pair. And this time we look down at pocket kings in the small blind. And we've got a boatload of limpers in front of us. So I raised this up to $17. We want to punish the limpers and we want to charge a little bit more because we are going to be out of position if they call. Unfortunately, everybody decides to fold their cards, so we take this one down uncontested. All right, this time we're in middle position, and I look down at queen, jack, offsuit. Uh, we've got one limper in the pot. I raise it up to $8. The table's been a little bit tight, so I'm trying to induce a little action here. And we do get a call from the big blind, and the limper decides to go ahead and get out of the way. So we're going to go heads up here to a flop. And the flop comes down, I would say, pretty good for our exact holding. We see a flop of queen, three, four, rainbow. Player quickly checks to us. I fire out a continuation bet of $10. They quickly fold. Easy game. All right, we've got a premium hand here on the button. Ace, king of hearts. Got a bunch of limpers again in front of us. So I go ahead and raise this up to $12 want to isolate some of these weaker players. And strangely enough, we end up just getting called by the big blind who has been playing pretty snug. So alarm bells are going off in my head here when he decides to put in this call out of position. All the limpers decide to just go ahead and fold. So we're gonna go heads up here to a flop. And we completely whiff this board, Jack 10-9. Yes, we do have a straight draw, but most of our outs might be counterfeited with the spade draw out there. So when he checks, I decide to check. See the four clubs on the turn. He fires for 15, and I decide to just look for a better spot and fold. Okay, on to the next hand. We've got king nine of diamonds. This time we're in the hijack. We do get one limper that comes into the pot here who's been playing pretty much every hand. I go ahead and raise this up to $10, trying to isolate this player. But unfortunately, we get called by the small blind and the limper who i was trying to isolate lets his cards go so we're going to end up going heads up here to a flop with the small blind pretty dry board 10 10 4 they can have some tens in their range but i feel pretty good with my hand here so i go ahead and make a ten dollar continuation bet player quickly calls so we're going to go to a turn which is the seven of diamonds giving us more equity so when he checks, I decide to continue betting here, trying to recognize that equity. I make it $20. 
player thinks for a little bit, releases their cards, and we take down this pot. All right, this time we've got a premium again. We are in the big blind. It is Ace King offsuit this time. And we've got about three or four limpers here that decide to put in the $2 call and enter this pot. We are not going to be calling here or checking our option. I raised this up to $17 trying to isolate these weaker players, trying to charge them to get into the pot. And unfortunately, they all think that $17 is too expensive. So we end up taking this one down without facing any resistance. The table's been playing pretty tight up to this point. So I'm still trying to see if we can get some action going. I've got Ace Jack here in middle position. We've got a limper that comes in the pot. I raise this up to $10. And for the first time in this session, we start getting some callers coming here into this pot. Small blind decides to call, big blind decides to call, and the limper under the gun plus one decides to get in the mix as well. So we're going four ways to a flop, which comes down ace, six, four, all hearts. They all decide to check it over to me as the pre-flop aggressor here. I want to continue betting and charging any Broadway hands that have a heart. So I make it $20 to go, thinking we're going to get called by at least one player, and everyone decides to let their cards go. So we don't get any additional action here on this flop, but we do take down a small pot. <laughs> Moving on to the next hand here, this time we are on the button, and we pick up Queen Jack off suit. And as usual, we've got about three or four limpers that enter the pot in front of us. This is often the case at these $1, $2 games. Everybody wants to see a cheap flop. No cheap flop this time, though. I make it $15 to go. And the big blind decides $15 is a good price, puts in the call. Middle position limper decides it's a good price as well and puts in the call. Everyone else decides that's too much money and they get out of the way. So we're going to end up going three ways here to a flop. The flop isn't too great for our exact holding. We see eight, five, four with two diamonds. Big blind puts in the check. The middle position limper decides this is a good flop for him to donk. He bets $30. I think there's better spots for us here, being multi-way with someone left to act behind us. I just decide to fold. Big blind gets out of the way, and the middle position limper takes down this pot. All right, we've got pocket nines in middle position. We're going to be raising this up. We make it $10 to go here, and it ends up folding around to the small blind who puts in the call. Big blind decides to come along as well. So we're gonna go three ways here to a flop, which comes down pretty safe for our hand. Six, six, deuce, rainbow. Okay. Don't expect this to really help either player. So when they check it over to me, I make it $15 to go. Small blind quickly folds. Big blind decides that he wants to see another card here though. So he decides to go ahead and put in the $15 call. So we're going to go heads up here to a turn, which is a pretty bricky card. Deuce of spades shouldn't change too much, but I think the player will now be incentivized to continue calling with pocket pair type hands like eights, sevens, pocket fives, etc. So I go ahead and make a $40 bet here on this turn card. Player thinks it over for a little bit, but decides $40 is too expensive for their hand. So they go ahead and put their hand into the muck and we take down this pot. Now I'm not gonna put a transition here between this hand and the next hand because we're gonna be dealt a premium holding the very next shuffle. If you like this content though, please do hit that like button. Please hit the subscribe and hit the notification bell so you do not miss future episodes. We've got some travel that we're planning coming up on the vlog. We're gonna be going to LA. We're gonna be going to some other poker rooms. You don't wanna miss those episodes. So definitely hit that notification bell. All right, this next hand, we look down at the ladies. 
And we are in middle position here uh, again. So we are gonna go ahead and raise this up to $12. Ends up folding back around to a couple of the action players at the table. The small blind puts in the $12 call. Big blind puts in the $12 call. We're gonna go three ways to a flop again here. And this time the flop does connect with our hand. We see ace, queen, eight with two hearts. Flopping middle set. Both players check it over to me and I decide that I want to go ahead and continue on this very dynamic board. I make it $20 to go. And unfortunately, both players, after thinking it over for a little bit, decide $20 is too expensive. They fold, and we end up taking down this small pot. Thank you. Thank you. King Kong again, the same variety that we had earlier, two red kings in the small blind, the same exact position. We've got a limper in the pot. Everyone else gets out of the way. I decide to raise this up to $14. I wanna get this limper isolated. He's been playing a lot of hands. He's a newer player to the table and he hasn't been doing so hot already. So wanna get into some pots with him and this is a good spot to do just that. He decides $14 is a good price and we see a flop of queen six four rainbow. I'm first to act here. I'm gonna be continuing on this board about 100% of the time. I make it $20 to go and they quickly fold. So we end up taking down a small pot with our pocket kings. It's been tough to get action at this table. All right, this has been a tough table to get value from. It seems like most people are just getting to the flop and then folding unless they've hit the nuts. So hopefully we can get some value from this hand. We pick up king, queen, offsuit in middle position. I go ahead and raise this up to $12 after it folds over to me. And our friends in the blinds who have been calling me pretty much all night decide to go ahead and stick in the $12. Small blind and big blind go ahead and both put in the call. So we're gonna go three ways to a flop here. Flop is pretty good for our exact hand. We see queen, jack, six, rainbow here. The small blind decides now this is a good flop to donk bet into, $20. I go ahead and call the $20 donk bet and we're gonna go heads up now to a turn. The turn is the king of clubs improving our hand to two pair. Small blind checks his holdings, makes it 15 now to go on the turn. And I elect to just call here again. And we see a river, which is a brick, the deuce of spades. Small blind does not shut down though. He goes ahead and makes it $30 to go. I elect to just go ahead and put in the $30 call here on the river. I think there's a good argument to be made to raise this up to get called by worst two pair holdings or queen X hands. As played though, I do call, he turns over ace jack off suit. We show our two pair. That's gonna be good enough to win this $180 pot. We take that down to end the session. All right, so I'm just getting around to recording the outro for episode 13. It's about a day and a half later, so we're Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. But uh, we were in the game for $300. We cashed out for $375. I'll put the totals up here. Kind of a different session. We didn't get into any really big pots. It was more just kind of your basic ABC play, raising pre-flop, c-betting post-flop, winning on the flop, raising pre-flop, double barreling, flop and turn, winning on the turn, um, calling in spots where we just have a really strong range and a really strong hand and more than likely the opponent is bluffing, so taking down some good pots there, and then just playing our big premium pairs aggressively. So just really a lot of ABC poker, 
nothing super fancy, nothing um, crazy in terms of monster pots played in this episode. Hope you still enjoyed it. I think this is just a good representation of how poker is a lot of the time. It's not the norm that you're getting in these huge monster pots all the time. They do happen, but they tend to happen uh, pretty rarely, right? So also it depends on how deep you're playing for that. But for the most part, I think you're just kind of chipping away and trying to develop a solid hourly win rate or big blind per 100 hand win rate. So that's it for this episode. Please do hit the like button. If you like the vlog, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future episodes. Thank you all so much for all the support and I will see you in episode 14. Be well and take care.